Well, today is Wednesday, March the 31st. As we continue our study of the scriptures today, we are in the book of Leviticus, of which we have been going chapter by chapter uh, these last few days. And uh, the title of today's devotional is The Leper and the Portrait of Sin. And the scripture reading is Leviticus chapter 13 and 14. Now, just to bring you up to where we are in our study, and our study of that which the Lord declared clean and unclean began in Leviticus 11. Now, we are continuing today looking at the ancient scourge of leprosy, which is the subject of Leviticus chapter 13 and 14. Now, leprosy, you might it might surprise you, but leprosy is still found in our 21st century world. Now, today it's known as Hansen's disease. Leprosy is a bacterial infectious disease, and it is treatable in the day in which we live. However, in ancient times, it was a dreaded disease that inevitably led its victims to isolation from society and assigned to a leper colony where they would eventually die. So Leviticus chapter 13 is going to give us the laws and the regulations for leprosy, which, by the way, is a symbol of sin in the scriptures. Leviticus chapter 14 will give us guidelines for ceremonial cleansing of the leper when the high priest declares him clean. Let's look at Leviticus 13 for a few moments. Since ancient times, Egypt has been infested with leprosy, and its traces followed the children of Israel out of that country. Now the Lord, continuing his commands regarding the clean and the unclean, required that Moses and Aaron would address, diagnose, and exclude lepers from the tribes of Israel. Remember, it was a highly infectious disease in that day. Now, the Lord directed Moses and Aaron in the steps required to protect the people from the spread of leprosy. It was essential then that the disease be properly diagnosed. Now, often beginning as no more than a rash or a boil, leprosy could eventually produce dreadful open sores, and decaying flesh. In fact, the advanced stages of leprosy would find the leper with rotting limbs, clothes soiled and rent as an outward sign of mourning. Lepers were to wear a napkin over their mouths and to cry out to anyone who approached them, unclean, unclean. Well, Leviticus 14 presents for us the fact that there were times that a leper was miraculously healed, or someone whom they thought had leprosy did not have it. Now, so when that time of celebration came, the leper would bring uh, to the tabernacle, to the high priest, sacrifices which were prescribed to ensure the legitimacy of the healing and the purification of the leper. So we're looking at ceremonial uh, uh, cleansing. Now, after following the prescribed rites of purification, the leper was deemed clean by a high priest, restored to the fellowship of his family and his nation. Now, what is the spiritual application of this matter of leprosy? Well, leprosy was the physical disease that God chose to illustrate the infectious nature of sin among his people. Consider Leviticus chapter 13, and I'll not name off all the verses, but many times in Leviticus 13, we see leprosy referred to as unclean. Now, understand this. Leprosy was more than a skin issue of the outward man. Leprosy would eventually and inevitably affect the tissues, the nerves, and the body extremities would rot and decay. Leprosy could scar the body so that there was an unbearable ugliness to the leper. Well, 
leprosy, effect, uh, leprosy's effect on the body served as a spiritual portrait of sin's effect on a man's soul. Now, modernists would have us believe that man is born innocent, and his environment, his home, his society, religion, somehow has caused the societal deprivations that we view as wickedness and criminal in our day. Well, the scriptures declare a different point of view. Of view. The problem of man and his sin is this. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Paul would write of the heart of man. Of himself he writes, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, in my heart, in my mind, dwelleth no good thing. Romans 7 verse 18. Jesus said of the heart in Matthew 15, verse 19 and 20, For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are things which defile a man. The ancients had no cure for leprosy. In fact, the leper in Israel prayed for a miraculous healing, a divine intervention, one that would be verified by the examination of the high priest and followed by sacrificial offerings. But the same diagnosis is true for man's plague of sin and wickedness. You know, humanity has no cure for sin and depravity. In the same way that there was no cure for leprosy without the Lord, there is no cure for a sinful soul without turning from sin and accepting Jesus Christ as Savior. The prophet Isaiah, writing of the coming of the Messiah, wrote this prophetically in Isaiah 53 and verse 4 and 5. Surely he, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He, Christ, was wounded for our sins, for our transgressions, for our wickedness. He was bruised on the cross for our iniquities and the chastisement and the suffering and the punishment for the peace that we now enjoy was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I invite you as I close today to confess that you're a sinner, a spiritual leper in the eyes of God. But know this and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. He was the perfect, sinless Son of God. And that He died on the cross for your sins and my sins. He was buried and He was raised from the dead. The Apostle John would write these words in 1 John 5 and verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You, my friend, were born as was I, a spiritual leper. But God has a healing. And that healing is through the act of mercy and His grace shown in Jesus Christ dying for your sins. Won't you turn from your sin today and trust Him as your Savior? God bless you. Have a great day. Lord willing, I'll join you tomorrow as we continue our study in Leviticus. Bye-bye.